Hi there. Today, I would like to look at a new programming language for music called Sound as Pure Form. It's abbreviated SAPF. This should not be confused with a special access program facility. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. SAF? SAPF? However you want to pronounce it, it was created by James McCartney, who is the creator of the Super Collider programming language. I'm a big fan of Super Collider. I'll include a link below to a playlist where I use it to implement the Buchla 700 voice architecture. So when YouTube user Adam Armfield 1069 told me about SAPF, I thought I need to check it out. If you just search for SAPF on YouTube, you won't get relevant material. But if you add sound as pure form to your search query, a couple of live streams by Pulu Sound show up. These are excellent, and I highly recommend you check them out. And as far as I can tell, they're the only videos on this new language on YouTube. Unsurprisingly, SAPF has some Super Collider DNA in it, but it's not meant to be a replacement for Super Collider. It's described as a fourth-like language for audio synthesis using lazy lists and APL-like auto-mapping. I have a weird fascination with unconventional programming languages, and I think fourth and definitely APL fit the bill. So here's the GitHub. It looks like you can compile from source, but I don't want to do that. So let's click on releases, version 0.1.21.zip. Okay, so the readme says, put the SAPF program, here's our program, into tilde slash bin or wherever you keep commands. Okay, I had a bin folder created already. I put SAPF in it, but it wasn't in my path. So I'm going to add it to my path in my .zshrc file. Source.zshrc. Okay, that should add it to my path. Ooh, it runs. And it looked like it ran without me having to do this line. Let's see. They also want me to set up some environment variables. I'm going to change the name of this directory to sapf-files. Okay, I added those export lines to my .zshrc file. Let's copy this example called analog bubbles into the prompt here. Oh, that's exciting. How do I stop it? Oh, I type stop. <laughs> what does this one do? Okay, let's see. Whoa, there's a lot of stuff here. Let's go down. What about this particular example in the parentheses here? Let's see what this does. Okay, that's apparently another way of coding the same kind of thing. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Ah, let's see, a longer way to write the same form, but as parameterizable. Ooh, sample and hold liquidities. This one looks like it does something with the mouse. I have no idea what's going on, but I like it. This next one is pulse with modulation and resonant filter. Oh yeah. I love it. What is Deep Trip? It's that. Resonators tuned in a harmonic series with pitch ratios from a just scale. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, I have to know what an Asta noodle sounds like. Let's see, it looks like it can handle MIDI, although I'm not going to try to figure that out now. These are new age formants. This is a computationally expensive snare drum. Let's do that again. Snare play. Shebyshev wave shaping controlled by the mouse in X and Y. This one has the quote, if one can't tell the difference between a dead end and a good lead in music, then one doesn't have what it takes to be a composer of any worth. Some guy I disagree with on Facebook. Okay, enough of that. So here is an example that doesn't make music at all. It just gives you a sense of the expressive power of the language to solve this weird puzzle. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Here's a function that converts Arabic to Roman numerals. Oh. Here's an example of plotting a spectrogram. Let's see, I think for this to work, I first need to run this code up here to actually define analog bubbles. Yeah, in this language, the variable you're assigning is to the right of the equal sign. We'll spend some time learning the language in another video. Okay, so here analog bubbles is now defined. Let's see, what happens if I just say analog bubbles? There you go. All right, so let's now go down here. Hi there. I just recorded some video where I forgot to capture the system audio. So let's do that again. This is analog bubbles out play. And when we defined audio bubbles, we defined some default parameters and you can override those parameters. Okay, and let's run this to plot a spectrogram. Ah, it appeared on my second screen, so let me drag that over here. There's a spectrogram. So yeah, this language is a bit of a handful, but we're not going to let that stop us, are we? The description of the language is pretty much entirely in the README file. It reminds me of Smalltalk and Lisp in that it gives you a small number of primitives, but has very little limitations on how you combine them. In addition to the examples file we just looked at, there's this file that tries to give you an example for every one of the built-in functions. Let's see, to get help on a function, you need to put a back quote, and then let's try sgram help. Okay, so that tells us something about the arguments that sgram pulls off the stack, and what it does. I think I saw there is a help all. Oh, that's everything. Ha, ah, there's a function called blah. Let's see, scrolling up, it looks like there are a lot of built-in functions.